Hi there, Prayer Plant Girl here. Today I'm going to be planting some pumpkins and squash. I'm going to be starting them inside in some peat pots and that will just give them a little jump start on the season. I'm hoping to also get some of my melons planted as well and it'll be the same idea. I'm just going to be starting them in the peat pots to just get a jump start on my season. So I garden in Saskatchewan, Canada, zone 3B and my gardening season is about 110 days of frost free time. And so I like to try and stay ahead of the weather and always have things ready to get out in the garden as soon as the weather is ready. Now we had a really cold, miserable spring, lots of snow up until a week ago, and now it looks like we've gone to summer. So I'm not sure there's a chance I could just be putting these things right in the ground, but you never really know around here. And my average last frost date isn't for a couple of weeks yet. So I'm going to start them inside and then I'll put them out when it's a little more, when I'm feeling a little more comfortable with the weather. Right now our forecasts aren't getting anywhere near freezing, let alone um, below freezing, but that could change. So we'll get them started inside. So I picked up these pots. They're called peat pots, but I think these are actually made out of paper fiber, but peat pot is just kind of that common that common name for these type of pots. They're supposed to break down in the soil, but uh, I've never found that to be true with any of this type of pot. I've never used this actual brand before, but when I use them to start my plants in, when I'm ready to go put them out in the garden, I'll either peel it off if it's wet enough and just peels off easily without too many roots coming through, or just put several slits down the sides and across the bottom to help the roots to come out better and uh, grow stronger out into the, the soil that I'm planting them in and not just stay circling around in these pots because if you don't do that, sometimes that can happen with these types of pots. I only use these pots for things that are going to be in my house for a very short amount of time and mostly out in like my greenhouse or a cold frame or something before planting out because I do find that they can um, get a lot of algae and mold growth on them if you're if you're not careful. I find they need to be kept a little bit more damp than, than other potting mixes because the, the pot is, is uh, wicking the, the moisture out of the, the mix. But the advantage of these is you can take plants like melons and squash and things that aren't always really happy to be transplanted and pulled up out of like a plastic nursery container or something to put in the ground. And you can plant them in something like this and give them an easier transition into the garden. So that's why I like to use something like this for this type of plant. So I love to grow squash and, and uh, I always have lots of pumpkins and squash and things in my yard, but I've tried to pare it down this year. So I have lots more seeds in the house, but the ones I'm going to be trying to keep myself contained to this year, because I just don't have a ton of space is a uh, Rouge Vif de Thon. This is sweet meat. I grew this for the first time last year. I highly recommend this squash. It's a beautiful squash. It's great for um, baking with. It's a sweeter squash and it's stored really, really well for me this year. And it's a nice decorative squash that has kind of a, a bluey green um, exterior and kind of a squat look to it. So it's nice if you want to grow squash for um, autumn decorations, this is a great one. This is a uh, pumpkin. This is just kind of a, a general all around pumpkin. This is renegade. This is autumn frost squash. And I have a few saved seeds as well from last year. Last year was the first time I grew it. I really enjoyed this. This might be my favorite squash for roasting and eating in that manner. And it stored quite well for me as well. So I definitely want to have more of this this year. And then I'm trying these two for the first time this year. There's um, mashed potato squash and then I'm going to grow baked potato squash and then I'll try both of these this year and if we like them I'll try and decide which one we like the best and narrow it down to one of these but I've heard good things about both of them and I really wanted to to give these a try this will be a great kind of substitute for um, the starchy mashed potatoes so you, you can roast up the squash or bake the squash and, and kind of mash it up and it's supposed to have a good texture and flavor to substitute in instead of mashed potatoes. This intrigued me so I just had to give it a try. So this is a new one for me this year as well. This is the Syrian Hollis um, pumpkin. This one is supposed to have um, 
seeds that don't have a shell on them or a hull. And so you can collect this and then have the little pepitos or the little pumpkin seeds to roast and eat. And I love eating um, pumpkin seeds. So I'd like to, to give this a try. Hopefully I can get a good selection out of it. So those are all kind of your like winter squash, your storage squash and pumpkins. Uh, now I have a couple of summer squash that I'm going to do. So this is summer squash onyx. It's just a nice dark green, long summer squash. And this is sunstripe. And this is supposed to be a long gold squash with yellow striping on it. So just two kind of like zucchini squash to enjoy. Uh, I love to slice them up and, and fry them or bake them. And I love zucchini squash. So these will be good for that. So that's the squash I'm going to do. And then, uh, like I said, I have some, some me melons here that I'll probably start today as well. Uh, I had good success with growing melons on a trellis last year in my yard in very, very large uh, pots. And I'm hoping to try them inside my greenhouse this year and see if I can do even better with them. So I think all the varieties I have here are the exact same that I grew last year. So if you saw me growing last year, uh, one was Minnesota Midget, and I've saved some seeds out of one of the particularly um, most flavorful uh, Minnesota Midget that we got off the vine. That was the first year after many of trying to actually get decent fruit off of this plant. So I'm really excited to try it again and see if we can do even better this year. Uh, I also have Tip Top Melon, and then I have Early Canada, Scaly Bark, Moon and Stars, and Sweet Siberian. Those are all melons. So all nice, good sized melons, I would say, for growing just in your own yard. And I'm looking forward to trying those as well. So let's get planting. All of these are going to be planted pretty much the same way. So I'm not gonna take you through planting every single one, but I'll show you quickly what I'm going to be doing with them. So I've just filled this little pot and I've actually filled it pretty full to the top of the, the container here. So this type of seed is a pretty large seed almost all of these are quite large uh, the squash for sure and I just have here's some saved uh, sweet meat seeds so I'm gonna take three three of these seeds so that's what they look like and I've put a hole here that's about an inch or about two and a half centimeters deep and I'm just gonna drop them all in the same hole and then I'm just going to cover them over Make sure it's still at that one inch level. I'll put this in a tray with water so it'll bottom water, soak this whole thing because like I said, these pots are gonna soak quite a bit of moisture. So that way they'll get a good soak and make sure the soil and everything is damp. Um, and then I will just set them someplace nice and warm. Melons and pumpkins and squash all like to be around, they, their ideal temperature is about 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for soil temperature. You can start them when it's a little bit cooler, like 60 degrees, um, but anywhere in that 70 to 90, which is around like 20 to 30 Celsius for soil temperature is what they want. So I'm just probably gonna have them out here in the greenhouse for today and they'll warm up nice and warm and then I'll just bring them in at night when it's getting cooler at night. And that's all I'll do with these. I will put a humidity dome over the tray. So they'll go in a watertight tray. I'll line them all up with labels, of course, so I know who's who and put the humidity dome over. And that way they can stay nice and moist without me having to water them a lot um, and overwater them and they'll stay nice and warm and that's what we want with these you could if you don't have a space that's going to keep them warm enough you could put them on a heat mat and you know i might even bring one out here now that i think about that i might even put a heat mat down on this table back here and just have that on at night to keep them nice and warm and during the day they're fine they don't need to be in direct light uh, so that's something you don't need to worry about until they start to sprout once they sprout i will go through and i will pick just one of those seedlings to keep and the others I'll just come through with just like some fine snips or scissors and just cut them off. They get pretty big roots in that and you don't want to be pulling it out or you might disturb the roots of the one you want to keep which can damage them. So for something like this I definitely would just cut off the seedling and cut it way down close to the soil level. It won't grow back. You don't need to worry about that. That'll be all you need to do. So I'll start about probably three pots of each of these varieties and I'll probably wind up culling it down to 
to two to plant out in the end, but that gives me a good selection just in case I have some sort of problem with one of them because you can't easily, like I said, take a seedling out and divide them up with this type of plant. I find it just isn't worth the trying. They usually don't survive it. So even when you're planting something like a watermelon, and I mean, these seeds are significantly smaller. You can see the difference there. Um, the watermelon still wants to be planted quite deep like that. I think it just helps to keep good support for the stems so they don't break off. They can be kind of a fragile stem when they're just uh, getting growing there. And when you go to put them outside and harden them off, especially if you have winds or animals or anything that might kind of knock them around, or even you as the gardener, it could break, snap the stem off. So if it's just buried that little bit further in the ground right from the beginning, I think that just gives more support to it. So that's why you want to plant them so deep. So that's all there is to it. I'm just going to get planting and, and get this, this done so I can go out and enjoy. It's a beautiful, it feels like a summer day out there on uh, May 2nd. So let's get this, these seeds planted. So you can direct sow any of these seeds right into your planting space that they're going to be grown in. The advantage of what I'm doing and the reason I like to start them a little bit early is because a lot of these seeds need 90 or more frost-free hot, hot days to grow and produce fruit. And in my climate that's not always a guarantee. So sowing them just a little bit early gives me just that little bit greater chance of success with them. So if you want to just direct sow, especially if you live in a warmer climate or have a longer growing season, then just sow them directly into your garden. Just make sure that the soil temperatures are at least 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 Celsius, preferably warmer. If the soil temperature reaches over 95, uh, which I think is around 33 Celsius, then you probably have too warm of temperature, but I'm not sure. I don't know, from a cold climate, that seems like something that would never happen. I don't know. It must happen in some climates. But you don't want to start your uh, seeds for things like melons, squash, pumpkins too soon because they are vines. They're quite vigorous vines. Once they get growing, they're going to uh, grow fairly quickly. They'll, uh, they might seem a little bit slow at first, uh, but once they get one big leaf, that uh, will feed them with give them a little more energy from sunlight and that and then all of a sudden they just take off on you so you don't want to go I would say more than three weeks early just because anything longer than that is uh, probably going to wind up with you having very large plants that could be difficult to take care of inside and they may suffer more transplant shock than if you have a really large plant to put out you don't want it super large so these will take a good week or two to uh, sprout for me usually and then they'll have about a week or so of growing before they go and get put out in the ground. I usually wait about a week after my average last frost or if I have some sort of protective uh, covering that'll keep them warm then I can plant them a little bit sooner. So sometimes I'll plant, um, like last year I put the uh, wall of water um, which is just kind of a water filled tube kind of thing. I put those around my uh, melons and then I was able to get them planted out right around my average last frost date and just get them in the ground and get them going that much sooner that way. So that's an option. Or you could try hot caps or a cold frame area if you want it as well. But you need to make sure that whatever space you're using is going to have enough room for those vines to grow when they get going. So there, I was able to get nine types of squash planted and six types of melons. And I'm on a good start to getting some of those warm season veg in the ground here in a few weeks. So I'm very excited to have this done. And uh, like I said, I think I'm just gonna bring, I have a big four foot, uh, four foot by two foot heat mat that I actually just rolled up and cleaned up out of here. But I think I'm gonna bring it out instead of trying to remember to haul these in and out every day and night. And I will put it on this counter back here. They don't need hot sun baking on them. So I'll just put it down, put the trays on top, put some humidity domes over them to help keep them nice and moist in here. 
and I'll just have a timer set for that heat mat so that uh, with a sensor so that the soil always stays at least at that 60 degree mark and shuts off before it hits 80 and that way I'll be able to to have these growing out here in a nice protected spot while I wait for things to warm up a bit more outside. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.